Okay, so hopefully at this point you have watched the video and you have taken some notes uh, because if you haven't, then what I'm going to explain and what the words I'm going to use are going to make absolute, absolutely no sense to you. <laughs> and uh, so you'd really need to do that other stuff before we get to going through the worksheet. Okay, so this is Decay Practice Worksheet 1. Um, the first part here, types of decay, we're supposed to figure out if this is alpha, beta, or gamma decay. Remember the alpha, it looks like that, uh, beta looks like that, and gamma basically kind of looks like that. Just basically, it's like a little, you know, cursive V type of, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Um, so alpha decay is when the atom spits out a helium uh, nuclei, uh, which is two protons and two, uh, two pro sorry, two protons and two neutrons. And then um, whatever's left over is the more stable atom. So let's look for an alpha decay. So here we can see that uranium-232 has decayed and it has produced a helium atom. And so this right here must be alpha decay because that's the definition of alpha decay. It spits out a helium. Now beta decay is a little bit more complicated. Beta decay is... When to become more stable, one of the neutrons, remember neutrons have zero charge, right? So one of the neutrons basically splits into a proton and an electron. How can it do that? Because it's, if it splits into a proton, that's a plus one charge, and the electron is a minus one charge. And so together, they equal zero charge, which is the original neutron, right? So there's like a conservation of charge idea. There's, right, so a plus one and a minus one is the same thing as a zero, which is a neutron. Okay, anyways, beta decay. So in this case, number two, it looks like technetium has spit out an electron. And notice that the number of protons has gone up by one. So and, all, and, the, and the atomic mass hasn't changed, right? It's 130 and 130. That means that the total number of protons and neutrons has remained 130, but now we have one more proton than we did before. The only way that could be possible is if we lost a neutron. So in number two, it looks like a, a neutron has converted or transformed itself or decayed into a proton and this electron, so this must be beta decay. So beta. Let's take a look at number three. In number three, um, we see this hydrogen atom, and it has emitted an electron. And notice that, again, the number of protons and neutrons is the same, but we have one additional proton. It went from one to two. So this looks really similar to number two. A, a neutron from this hydrogen atom has decayed into this electron and an extra proton, so this must also be beta decay. So in this case, it looks like there wasn't any gamma decay. All right, so now the next section, balancing decay reactions. Um, we're supposed to just take a look at uh, this decay reaction and make sure that it's balanced. Uh, number four, we have this element W, uh, tungsten, I believe that is. Uh, I don't have my period, it doesn't really matter. Um, tungsten, hey, yay, yay me. So uh, this tungsten has undergone alpha decay. Uh, it has emitted a helium nuclei. And then what's left over is right here. So basically, we're just going to do some subtraction. If you started with 184 protons and neutrons together, and you just emitted something that had a 4 total, that means you're left with something with 180, with a total mass number of 180. Now, you had 74 protons. You emitted something that has two protons, which means you are down to 72. And now, what element has atomic number 72? It looks like this is hafnium, HF. And that's how you do alpha decay, right? It's not too hard. Uh, let's jump to number five. We have lead. In this case, it looks like it has lost four of its mass number and lost two of its atomic number, so this must also be alpha decay. Alpha decay is easy, it's just gonna be a helium nuclei. All right, atomic number four, because the helium nuclei has two protons, two uh, neutrons, so that's what helium looks like. All right. um, okay, number six. 
Uh, this again looks like another, I'll put it alpha here, this was alpha. This again looks like another alpha decay because it's emitting a helium nuclei, so now let's just work backwards. Uh, if the products are something with a mass number of 4 and a mass number of 207, that meant that the original mass number must have been 211. It emitted something with 2 protons here and 81 protons here. That means this must have been 83 protons at the beginning, right? This is really just common sense. And so what's the atomic number 83? This is bismuth, so Bi. All right, now let's jump to the other side. Okay, notice that we are given away, or we have uh, decayed into an electron, so this is going to be beta decay. So notice again that beta decay doesn't reduce the mass number at all because the mass number of an electron is zero. So whatever our, our um, more stable product is or uh, more stable atom is going to be, it's going to still have a mass number of 14. Uh, in this case here, uh, the we got to be a little bit careful here. There's this minus one here is basically the uh, charge of this electron. So we got to be careful. It doesn't have a mass of minus one. So if we went through beta decay, that meant that a neutron has turned into a proton. So we went from six, originally six protons, but now we're going to have one more. It's going to be seven. And again, the mass number is not going to change. That's the whole point of beta decay. So what has a mass number of, se or atomic number of seven? This is nitrogen. So this is what beta decay looks like. Again, the mass number doesn't change, but the atomic number went up by one, because you have had, now you have an extra proton instead of a neutron. All right, so now let's take a look at B or number eight. Here again, mass number remains the same, and the atomic number went up one. This also is beta decay, and you already, you already know what beta decay is when you have an electron that's emitted. So that's it. An electron has a mass of zero and it has a charge of minus one. It doesn't have a mass of minus one. It's just a charge of minus one. So you got to be a little careful when, it, when it's talking about electrons that that is not a mass number, it's a charge. And number nine. Uh, this looks again like another beta decay. Uh, so let's work backwards. The beta decay doesn't change the atomic number. Or sorry, the mass number. So that's still going to be 60. Um, remember that beta decay created an additional proton. So it became 28, which meant it must have been 27 originally. And the 27 is cobalt. All right, let's go on number 10. Here we're going to be writing the balanced decayed reaction. So not just filling in a blank. It's uh, going to come, make us come up with the whole thing. So here we have calcium going through beta decay. So beta decay always produces an electron. And the more stable version, now 45 is, of course, going to be remain the same. That's my arrow. So it's going to be 45. Beta decay goes up plus 1 on the, mat, on the atomic number, so this is going to be 21. What has atomic number 21? Scandium, SC. So, yeah, you need your periodic table if you haven't figured that out by now. All right, here we got plutonium going through alpha decay. Alpha decay always emits a helium nuclei, so you don't even have to even think about it. I want to point this out real quick that um, with beta and alpha decay, one of the products is all, you know, it's, you, you know what exactly what it is. The only thing that you really kind of have to figure out is what is the more stable form of the atom. But the product, you know, beta decay is defined by emitting an electron, and alpha decay is defined by emitting a helium nuclei. So it's not like you have to think too hard on that part of it. Anyway, so what's the other part? So what's the more stable form of plutonium? Well, it's alpha decay, so we started with 234. We just lost 4 on the mass number, so this is going to be 230. We had 94 on the atomic number, but we just lost 2 protons, so this is going to drop down to 92. And I believe that's going to be uranium, but let's just double check. 92, uranium. All right, uranium 230. Number 12, uh, this is polonium, and it's going through alpha decay. So, again, alpha decay always emits a helium nuclei. What is the more stable form of polonium? Well, uh, 210 minus 4 is going to be 206. 6. 84 minus 2 is going to be 82. And what is atomic number 82? Atomic number 82 is 
lead PB. And the last one, beta decay. A beta decay always spits out an electron. And then again, the only thing we have to think about is what is the more stable form of the sodium. If it's beta decay, the mass is still going to be 24. Um, but remember that one of those new, uh, neutrons had turned into a proton, so this is going to be 12 instead of 11. And that 12 is magnesium. So that's the answer for 13. Predicting decay products. What is the name of the product isotope form when radon-22 decays by alpha decay? Okay, so I'm just going to quickly... Uh, radon, I believe, is Rn. Atomic number 86. You got to know... You kind of have to write it this way because you got to figure out what the atomic number of radon is because that's going to define what the, new, what the new element is, right? The new product. So it's best to just write it out. Don't be lazy. So anyways... This will convert to 4 helium 2. All right, so 222 minus 4 is going to be 218. 86 minus 2 is going to be 84. That's a 218. Hey, no, it's 218, 84. And what's its, uh, that is polonium. So it says, what is the name of the product isotope? So this is going to be polonium. And remember, you always do the mass number with isotopes. It's going to be 218. What's the name of the product isotope on thorium-234 decays by beta decay? So let's do the same deal here. It's going to be 234. Thorium is... Thorium, where are you? Thorium. You can tell I haven't done this problem yet. I'm just doing it for the first time here. Thorium. You know what? Uh, there it is. Sorry. 90. It was hiding down there, uh, and those extra, oops, sorry, thorium is TH. Okay, so we're going to do beta decay. We already know what the product of beta decay is. It's an electron. Beta decay keeps your mass number the same, but this goes up by 1, so 91. So what is 91? This is protactinium, so PA. But the product isotope, remember, you got to write it out in isotope notation. So this is going to be uh, protactinium-234. That's how we do it.